Hi, it's Anastasia here. And I just wanted to talk briefly about warming up on the harpsichord. And um, as, as, as we all know, just diving cold into an instrument is, is, is not, it's never an, an easy thing. And especially with the harpsichord where your primary um, tools are these tiny little muscles on the, on, on the tips of your fingers, which you otherwise never ever get to use in your, in your daily life. Um, warming up is a, a really important way to to um, to not build bad habits into yourself and to make sure that your time practicing is as is is effective as possible. So I just like to show um, a few of my favorite warm ups to you. Um, to uh, and these are by no means exhaustive. If you if you come up with your your own warm ups that work well for you. Um, that's wonderful. I, I'm just showing you um, my favorite warm-ups to hopefully give you a bit of inspiration to find your own. So, the first, um, the first thing to do at the harpsichord is to, as I said, to wake up these little muscles because whether you've been playing uh, piano or organ in, in recent times or just you know not been practicing at, at, at all because our daily lives don't really have us using these muscles, it's, they are probably going to be slightly dormant and will need a, a, a bit of waking up. So what I do is um, I, I take each hand and just play a simple E major scale but just the first five notes. I, I love E major because it's just so much more ergonomic um, because your your long fingers are on um, the black keys or rather the white keys in this case and um, and the and it's, it just fits the hand so much better than, you know, C major does or anything. So just um, place your hands on E, F, F sharp, G sharp, A, and B. And just sort of bounce your hands on the key and try to feel that the point, uh, that, that, that plucking point that I, I talked about extensively in my video on, on touch. And um, f enjoy that resistance and start stroking the keys using those those little fingertips a very very subtle movement and and now start depressing the key and listen for your sound Make sure you're traveling horizontally along the keys as well as um, vertically. If you want, you can start with a more exaggerated pluck and stroke. And as you get more comfortable, you can make your movements more minute. And just do this with both hands. Do it for as long as you want because it's always hard starting on jumping to the harpsichord core, especially when you haven't been playing it for a very long and that point of resistance can just seem like this huge concrete barrier to you, you know, playing the instrument. So I would spend as much time doing this E major scale with both hands and don't go on with your practice until you feel incredibly comfortable with it and you're producing a nice sound that has blue and resonance and is growing and your arm is relaxed and so is your wrist and you feel like all is right with the world and the heart to go is not about to eat you up. So that's my first exercise that I love to do and I do it with both hands. The second important thing to um, uh, to, to do when uh, to pay attention to when when warming up on the harpsichord is practicing dynamics and articulation because uh, you know there's this this exercise is all very well and good for you know making yourself feel uh, comfortable with the instrument but it has its limitations because uh, you would never ever play a scale like that in in literature with when, when you get when you when you start playing uh, your your pieces you're going to have to differentiate um, extensively between 
uh, adjacent notes. So you're never ever going to be playing something like that. And you want to warm up to get your fingers used to differentiating. And also, uh, and I mentioned um, di dynamics. So much of um, dynamics on the harpsichord has to be imagined. You know, you have to, and it, it's just everything is so, so subtle. You have to hear all the dynamics that you're doing almost in, you know, in the amplified in your head for it to come even remotely come out. And, and this is where, um, you know, incorporating dynamics into your, your, um, your work in your, into your warm up actually warms not only your, warms you up not only physically, but warms you up mentally as well for your, uh, for when you approach your literature. So what I like to do is I do, um, uh, scales up and down but in groups of three and um, I start with uh, th the fingers four three two and or two three four in the right hand uh, oh, let's, pick, let's not go too deep so it's and I do that with four three two five four three and three two one and then similarly one two three two three four and three four five um, with the right hand and what I try to do is I try to um, in this in this exercise I, I practice doing a decrescendo within those three notes so good impulse on the first note um, over legato for the second note and then a short third note articulate articulate between notes two and three. The important thing is that you're working dynamics and uh, so decrescendo as well as an articulation into your warm-up and then I do it on the upper manual, the lower manual, with the couple, without the couple, with different fingerings and all the time trying to um, uh, um, get that decrescendo and uh, lilt. Uh, and oh, I, I forgot to mention um, one more thing that that the the E major exercise actually does, which is which is helpful. Um, even though it does have its limitations when it comes to uh, representing what you would do in literature, one fantastic reason for um, warming up that way is to help your body find the the absolute minimum amount of effort needed in order to depress the keys of the harpsichord and um and will you would be surprised at how just how little effort it takes how much weight it takes to depress a harpsichord key it's a very very focused movement in the fingertips and nothing and nothing more um, I was never, um, before I came to the harp school, I was never, you know, a, a very uh, strong pianist that played lots of, you know, Liszt and Rachmaninoff or whatever, but I still found that when I started to play the harp school, I needed to learn how to control my weight because I was just throwing too much of my weight into it. So um, that's step two, um, practicing dynamics and articulation. And the third step is uh, practicing my, my third favorite warm-up is um, practicing arpeggios because as I mentioned in my um, video on continuo uh, the, the the one of the most important tools a harpsichordist can have in his or her bag is just a variety of beautiful uh, um, diff beautiful arpeggios at different speeds that are nice and um, that are nice and smooth and um, and also have a, a nice decrescendo toward the top so as to not create these weird impulses that are off the beat. So um, arpeggios is probably the, war the warm up that I use the most and this is the exercise uh, which, I, uh, which I use. Um, so I, I practice my arpeggios in, in, in thirds so with 
triplets. So I use my left thumb on the way up and then my right thumb on the way down. And I go up the scale, uh, basically using the harmonies of the octave, um, the octave rule. Um, and then the next, and then I, I change the rhythm. So from triplets, I go to eighth note to sixteenth note. So it's. And then my next one is two sixteenth notes and one eighth note. And then the last permutation would be. 16th note, 8th note, 16th note. So that is the exercise, but I haven't, uh, I haven't finished showing you how I practice it yet. So again, we're trying to incorporate as many different things because, you know, being a harpsichordist is basically being a, a multitasker. You're, you're, you're shaping things at the, the most micro level and as well as on, the, on, a, on a big scale and you're trying to different, you know, making sure your fingers are always doing something different from each other. So you, um, it's, it's important that your warm up involves as much multitasking as well. So your brain gets um, prepared for what's, what's to come in your practice. Um, so the way I practice that arpeggio exercise is to, um, is to do a decrescendo towards the top as well as a decelerando because um, when when we play um, arpeggios, no matter on the harpsichord, no matter what the tempo, there's always um, because we don't want to have that a accent. We uh, we have to uh, the way we do that crescendo is also by slowing down, and so you want the, the the chord to be rolled a bit faster at the bottom so that it, it gives the impulse, um, but then for it to just sort of um, peter off toward the top so that it, it, it becomes more elegant. So I I start off with the triplets. So fast, I'm doing a decrescendo as well as a diminuendo toward the top. And then and then acceler accelerando um, coming down. quite exaggerated um, and then with all the rhythmic permutations Beautiful arpeggios that are, are, are smooth and and um, and finish very elegantly. And you can do that in all keys major or minor and it's a wonderful way to get your knuckles all nice and, and flexible and to get the hands soft um, and ready for any, every, everything that you're going to throw at it in your practice session. So those are my favorite warm-ups. Um, let me know what, what yours are and if, if I can help anyway, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Thank you for listening.